Let's go to the split. I was announced by Mayor Adams at the end of um, January. It feels like dog years. <laughs> um, and uh, we had a very clear charge. There were four separate offices that the town that worked in the city of New York, and they each had their silos for filling and city sustainability and environmental remediation over there. We brought them all together, and we give them a new leader. And that was me. And the, the goal is to coordinate, <laughs> uh, coordinate climate action through an environmental justice lens and an environmental health perspective. And that hopefully is, you know, we're nine months in, but to me that is going to feel and, and be different policy making for the next four years, um, for sure. One of the key things of, of doing that is ensuring that we are always thinking about climate policy, not just as something that we're planning for in 2050 or 2100, that is really important, but we need a coordinated action that is really people focused. And that is also thinking about environmental policy of life today. So for sure on the communication side, I don't want to put yet another mask in front of people about here's what we're doing in 2050, here's the project that's going to take us 20 years to complete. Those are all very important, right? But there is a way that say on Monday we announced $112 million worth of investment for tree planting in key vulnerable communities across New York City, right? So that was our Monday announcement. Um, because of COVID, we had a, you know, a decrease in our planting rates in the last couple of fiscal years, but we just had our record-breaking uh, uh, tree planting rate uh, uh, amount, and we are dedicating, the Adams administration is dedicating a significant amount of funding. The reason that matters is that, again, the key goal here is targeted investment to redress the effects of redlining and disinvestment that has happened over the last 10,000 years, right? And so it's like, you, you, you don't, you can't just invest in the shiny thing. Yes, if you have to drive a car, I would hope that it's a hybrid, and I would hope we have the charging infrastructure that is needed. But ultimately, I need investments in public transit. I need investments that benefit renters, not just homeowners, because most of New York City is made up of renters, right? And I need things that actually improve our streetscape so that grandma is not baking in her five-story walk-up during a heat wave because she thinks that the street is too hot when really the, the danger is inside of her apartment, right? So that is the gender piece. Right, that where poverty comes, a key a vulnerability to climate issues that doesn't need to be there if we're more thoughtful about how we divide and how we invest our capital dollars. Mm -hmm. Congratulations on that announcement. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. More to come. <laughs> Great. Um, Jamie, when you talk on climate tech, you focused a lot on educational and, and economic opportunities for women. How have you seen that play out in terms of? co-benefits related to climate? For example, are, are there reductions in specific harms that women sometimes experience after climate disasters, the risks of violence, and, and, and so on? Can you, can you tell us about the, the co-benefit side? Yes. Um, the Women Plus and Climate Tech is, this, is an amazing um, organization that's made up of a thousand or more um, women from around the world uh, who will work in climate tech, which is a, basically a space that is um, dominated by men, I would say, still. Um, and they really went through this incredible process last year of like going out and you know listening to women who work in climate tech and identifying like what are the ways that we can integrate, you know, not just financial considerations and you know the, the, the ESG aspects, but actually look at gender and how gender is not just important as an add-on, but like an integral part of any, you know, business strategy. And how can and actually identifying ways that that you know that that gender equity can help accelerate companies for their net zero targets, and so with things like you know, Miranda, you you mentioned earlier that women in certain you know in decision making, how can positions of decision making, or you know, in, in parliaments that are predominantly made up of, of women, their environmental treaties are, are more likely to be passed, and um, inside companies, the you know decisions and the, the, the timelines for net zero tend to be, tend to be faster. Um, there tend to be interim targets. There's kind of so there's there's a lot of amazing research that has been done in a report um, that was recently released uh, called "Accelerating the Race to Net Zero and Creating Gender Equity um, to Accelerate Companies' Climate Strategies." So that's really you know I work with a lot of companies and investors as part of my part of my job at Project Drawdown, 
And I think this is a really important gap that we have not seen addressed before in the private sector. Um, so yeah, having that, you know, having gender equity integrated into corporate sustainability strategy, um, I think is gonna be a really key trend when, you know, all of the benefits of that that, that we're talking about today.